Good morning, and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church's worship service for Sunday, May 4th, 2020, the fourth Sunday in Easter. I invite you to download the bulletin for the service so you can follow along. A link to that bulletin can be found in the description under the video on Facebook and YouTube, which you might be watching this on right now, or you can also find it on our website, www.centralprespb.com, under the publications link at the top of the webpage. Since you hopefully have downloaded that bulletin, uh, we're going to go ahead and ask you uh, ask that you turn your attention to the announcements on the back of the bulletin. Uh, Governor Asa Hutchinson, uh, it has been reported by local news services, uh, will be announcing uh, dates and requirements uh, to be able to open up houses of worship and churches in the near future. Um, please follow us on our social media um, accounts, which you can find uh, at username Central Prez PB, um, for information about whether or not we will be opening up next week or what time in the future we will be uh, reopening. Um, archives of our online services can be found at Facebook and YouTube. Links to each are on our website as well. Also at our website, you can now find online giving. Uh, you can look for the Donate Now link at the top of the webpage. We take credit cards, debit cards, and checks. And you can also set up recurring donations on a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly basis. One last thing I'd like to mention, um, Reverend Tim Reeves have, has penned a letter to the congregation that can be found in today's bulletin. So we encourage you again to go ahead and download that document that can be found um, where I mentioned earlier. Let us prepare to worship the Lord. In life, in death, in life beyond death, Jesus Christ is Lord. Over powers and principalities, over all who determine, control, govern, or finance the affairs of humankind, Jesus Christ is Lord. Of the poor, of the broken, of the sinned against, and the sinner, Jesus Christ is Lord. Above the church, Beyond our most excellent theologies and in the quiet corners of our hearts, Jesus Christ is Lord. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen, in, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us draw near to God with sincerity of heart and full assurance of faith. Our guilty hearts sprinkled clean, our bodies washed with pure water. Let us confess our sins before God and one another, first using the uh, prayer printed in the bulletin, and then silently. Good Shepherd, you call to us. We confess that you know, we know your voice, but fail to heed it. Merciful God, we know that in order to walk paths of righteousness and enjoy your abundant life, we must follow you in trust and obedience. We confess that though you beckon us, we go our own way. And though you defend us, we are filled with fear. You spread a table before us, our cup overflows. Yet we judge those with whom we are seated and worry there will not be enough of your mercy to go around. In your mercy, forgive us, Lord. Take us by the hand and guide us in your ways. Help us to rest in your presence and there learn to be grateful and generous. And now silently, Amen. As people born of the water and the spirit, we have died to the old life and a new life has begun. God's grace is poured out upon us day by day. Come to the water and remember your baptism. Be thankful and live as one who has been raised to new life. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the second chapter of the, God, of the book of Acts, beginning with the 42nd verse and proceeding through verse 47. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, 
to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Our second reading is the 23rd Psalm. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And finally, from the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to John, beginning with the first verse and proceeding through verse 10. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and, steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. <clears throat> Open now our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, so that as your word is proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear, that hearing we might believe, and that believing we might live lives of richer and fuller service, glorifying you here on earth as you are glorified in heaven. Amen. As people of faith, there are a few things that should always be at the forefront of our minds. First, although faith is a serious thing, we should never take ourselves too seriously. Second, words can and often do make a difference in how we look at and practice our faith. And third, Faithfulness is something to be celebrated, not endured or imposed. Certainly that is the case in this morning's scripture readings. Psalm 23 celebrates the love and grace of a God who provides for, shelters, comforts, and feeds his people. It portrays a picture of God who is truly intimate with God's creation. Perhaps that is one of the most beautiful truths of Scripture that God wants and, in fact, chooses to be in communion with us. 
God knows our deepest fears, our most heartfelt desires, our sinfulness and shame, our hopes and dreams, our strengths and weaknesses. God knows our brokenness and the things we do to ourselves and to others out of that brokenness. And yet, God continues to reach out to us, provide for us, protect us, and redeem us. And few images capture that amazing grace with as much force as that of God as our shepherd. In John's gospel, Jesus reveals himself to be the good shepherd, and in so doing, reveals much about himself as our Lord. Shepherds protected their sheep from wild animals and thieves, both of which were in abundance. Shepherds led their animals. They were always out in front of their flock, defending them from all sorts of dangers. And because of a rather intimate relationship between sheep and shepherd, the sheep came to know and recognize their shepherd's voice over any others. So, Jesus says, it is with us. <clears throat> we are so intimately known by God that we are able to recognize God's voice. Above the din of all the vain things in this world that might charm us most, above the cries of competing voices, we are able to distinguish and discern the call of our great and good shepherd. We understand beyond any shadow of a doubt that our lives, our sustenance, our protection, our strength, and our salvation come from the shepherd who provides everything we need in such abundance. We recognize that it is the Lord who calls us into being and who forms us into community. We call that community the church, and the Greek word for that is ekklesia. Literally, it means those who are called out of the world. So we might think of the church as something completely different from the world around it. Our readings from Acts this morning celebrated the church that exhibited what could only be described as something completely different. Listen again to how Luke described that community. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with, the pe with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Holding things in common, giving away what they didn't need, and meeting together out of gladness and generosity of spirit, which simply filled their hearts, that was ecclesia. Suddenly, without anyone noticing how, everything that Jesus himself had ever said and done and all the things he had ever tried to get his followers to understand while he walked among them was happening in their midst. They found themselves called out of an old way of being in the world into a new way. It was truly something completely different. Of course, those days didn't last too long. Skip over a few chapters in Acts, and you can read about Ananias and Sapphira, who sold a plot of land and secretly withheld some of the proceeds from the community, and who were, as a result of their lies, struck dead by Peter. Some have gone so far as to say that such days never existed in the church and that Luke was simply portraying nothing but a utopia. That would make a lot of sense, especially if we consider the truth that the church's history is littered with incidents in which individuals and institutions as a whole have pretended to be about the ways of Jesus, but when it came right down to it, have proven that they are not much different from all the worldly powers out there. You see, our Lord gave us a radically different vision of serving others. Too often, we have chosen to be served instead. 
our Lord gave us the radically different vision of peace to confront violence, but the church has at times raised armies to destroy others in the very name of God. The church has done some very ugly things down through the centuries, but Luke reminds us that we are called to something completely different. We are called away from all the truly superficial things which the world considers of ultimate importance, things like free enterprise or looking out for number one. We are called to be a community that will make people scratch their heads in disbelief and wonder why we are nothing like anything they have ever seen before. Perhaps some will violently resist such a community. Others may simply look in wonder and say, what's gotten into them? But ours is not the task to listen to their voices. We are simply to heed the voice of our shepherd. I believe that most, if not all, of our problems as a church stem from a fundamental absence of awe before our sovereign God, a truth made all the more tragic when the pages of Scripture time and time again reveal an awesome and awe-inspiring God. This God always opens his arms to sinners and willingly welcomes and forgives us. This God looks at us and sees a people who are beautiful and worth loving. This God became flesh and lived among us full of grace and truth. This God brings healing to the broken, food to the hungry, friendship to the lonely, and justice to the poor. This God hears and answers the prayers of all who call on his name. This God intervenes in people's lives in ways large and small to bestow an abundance of mercy and grace. This is the God whom David was moved to celebrate and worship and who the church Everyone who is called out of the world to be something completely different celebrates and worships in our life together. Imagine a community that actually forgave people instead of simply talking about forgiveness. Imagine a community that thought of all people as lovely and lovable. Imagine a community where people gladly and generously sacrifice their own self-interest to lift others up. Imagine a community that worked hard to heal the broken and feed the hungry, to befriend the lonely and bring justice to the oppressed. Imagine a people of prayer who believe in God's power and willingness to intervene in the world and who also intervene in people's lives to be a witness of mercy and grace. Wouldn't that be something truly different to behold? Sadly, that sense of awe is too often absent in an age when science and technology can offer an explanation for just about anything. Very little surprises us anymore, even less captures our soul's imagination. Consequently, faith is harder and hardly ever celebrated by some. And maybe that's why we hear more people screaming at, their to at the top of their lungs. We have to get right with God instead of celebrating joyfully the truth that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to God's self. Maybe that's why the Christian faith is too often reduced to a set of rules and restrictions, regulations and admonitions instead of a thankful litany of everything that God has done for us. Maybe that's why so many Christians are angry and fearful instead of joyful. Maybe if we reclaimed that sense of awe, we would find a real boldness and willingness to heed our shepherd's call to be something completely different in the world. And maybe, just maybe, we can start here and now because our shepherd is calling out to us in a voice 
that is radically different from any other demanding our attention. Do we hear it? Will we follow it? To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. I would ask now, at this time, that you would please stand and confirm what it is we believe, using the words of the Apostles' Creed that can be found in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now return to God our thanksgiving through our tithes and offerings using the online donation button at the top of our website, www.centralprespb.com. It is right and our greatest joy to give you thanks, eternal God, for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us. But we are most grateful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and for your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. For our Lord reconciled us to you and to one another, opening the door to eternal life. Your Holy Spirit continues to confront us, convict us, correct us, and equip us to enter the world and share the good news of your redeeming grace. And so, O oh God, we op offer up our times, our talents, our treasures, and indeed our very selves to you, uh, to you, for you to use as you see fit. Until that most glorious day when, at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend, and every tongue shall confess him, Lord, to your honor and glory. Amen. At this time, let us share our joys and concerns. Uh, which we have some today. Um, we were asked to pray for Dana Neal's father, Thomas Porter. Friend of Linda Vick, Melissa Abernathy, is awaiting surgery to remove a polyp. Uh, please pray for uh, serenity for her. Um, my coworker and Rose Von Tunglin's coworker, uh, Mary Owens, uh, please pray for her and her family. Uh, she lost a brother uh, this past week. We ask that you continue to pray for Kyle Judkins, who is um, awaiting information on a possible job opportunity. Um, we also continue to ask that you pray for our frontline responders, our first responders, um, the, um, uh, the healthcare workers, our police and firefighters, our ambulance uh, workers, uh, those who are uh, stocking shelves and manning local retail outlets, and also, um, please pray for those who are in our prison system, um, those who are incarcerated, and those who, are, who work in the prison system. Uh, as many know, there is a very large outbreak of coronavirus in our Cummins unit, and, uh, we need, and they have lost several uh, inmates uh, recently, and, um, and also the, um, it is spreading to the, uh, the workers there at that unit as well. Uh, we need to keep those people in our prayers. Um, I do have a praise report. Um, I, I didn't mention this last week. I should have, um, but uh, someone else uh, brought it to my attention. Uh, Langston lost one of her front teeth, and just behind her, Scarlett also lost one of her front teeth. So uh, they, are also, they were both very excited, uh, got a visit from, I know Langston got a visit from the Tooth Fairy, I believe that Scarlett last night probably got a visit too because I think she lost it on Saturday. So uh, that is a very exciting time. So the girls are growing up very quickly before our eyes, which is also very, very exciting. Holy and gracious Father, we give you thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact the same today as he was yesterday and will be for all of our tomorrows. We ask that you be with our, those people who have been affected 
or have lost loved ones to this coronavirus. We ask that you be with Dana Neal's father, um, Miss Melissa Abernathy, uh, uh, Mary Owens and her family. Uh, please comfort them at this time of loss. Please continue to be with Kyle Judkins. And uh, we thank you for the blessings that you have provided for Scarlett and for Langston. Give us hope as we strive to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Go out into the world in peace, to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit. Taking today's message with you, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you now and forevermore. Amen.